what is riches? Is riches another word for wealth? The world would prove that. When you say wealth, you mean rich. When you mean rich, you mean wealth. Some people try to try to disconnect the two, but I would argue that those two words are, are somewhat hand in hand, could be used interchangeably, may have their own distinct, because you could be rich in health, but poor in finances, that's true. That doesn't mean you're not wealthy, right? So you could make that distinction. You could say, well, wait a minute, Denzel, wealth is a blessing. We are born with that is, is definitely literally meaning either the possession or the uh, mastery of your health, your fitness, your skills, belief system, your philosophies, right? So you could make that distinction. So we'll say that. But it says, by humility, so there's a characteristic that we would need to have on this side in order to truly receive more blessings while we're living. Because we're born with a blessing, right? Everyone is born with blessings, but then there's more blessings as you get older and older that, that, we, uh, that we grow with, right? And it says, by humility and fear. So if, as long as I'm humble and I fear the king not the worry, pain, and fear of the world view, if I put my fear toward the king, give it to him, and stay humble in that, then what comes of that is more riches, honor, and life. Okay, another declaration statement, we go to Proverbs and go to 22, and it says, the blessings of the Lord maketh rich, it maketh rich. So it makes the, bl the blessings of the Lord king makes you rich, pretty straightforward. And he addeth no sorrow with it, meaning no pain, no worry, no fear, only abundance. Some may argue that's not true, but I would, I would draw a clear distinction here. I'm gonna erase this part here. If, in fact, we know that if I try to make wealth in the world, it's going to come with some pains, some worries, some fears, some sorrows, even death. We know that. To be true on the kingdom side of things wealth is a blessing so it's a gift i didn't have to work for the king is then saying hey instead of experiencing fear in the world and worry cast your fear basically or you could say submit fear and worry this is a formula for success so you and i are gonna have fear no matter what because we have built in our brains. I learned this through therapy. This is insane. I learned this through therapy that you and I, we all have a part of our brain is the part, I don't know if it's called the amygdala, maybe someone could correct me, but there's a part in your brain that doesn't think, okay? It only reacts. So in other words, that part of your brain is called anxiety and it has three responses, fight, flight, or freeze. So you're either gonna freeze in the moment when you're experiencing a fearful worry, you're gonna fight to protect what's yours when you experience fear, or you're gonna run, you're gonna run away and hide. Those are your three options, okay? And the strategy, or you could say there's a there's the, the fourth option, is instead of having to decide whether I'm gonna fight for this, run away, freeze, I'm gonna, I'm gonna receive the fear that I just got because it because I can't get rid of fear, right? Where you're literally, you've been designed that way. It's part of your brain. Again, if someone knows it in the comments, like drop in the comments for me, what part of your brain is that? Like science has proven this, okay? It's insane. So it's a part of your brain that literally just reacts. It doesn't think. The other part of your brain catches up with the reaction and starts processing what the heck is going on in this situation. And then logically at that point, that's when you submit your fear to the king. So you just go to him and say, hey, king, I have, a, I have a fear that I may lose this home. I have a fear that my line of credit might get reduced. I have a fear that my credit cards might get canceled. I have a fear that my HELOC might get frozen while doing this velocity banking strategy. I have these fears, these worries. So um, king, lord, god, I'm going to give this fear to you because I don't want it. And you said to give it to you because it's part of your legally binding words, your, your law abiding words and your law abiding king uh, to your own laws, right? That you've established on this, on this planet. So, um, here you go. 
right? So you submit the fear and worry to the, to the king. And then as a result of that humility and vulnerability in honestly giving your fear, acknowledging you have fear and worries and you're going to give it to the king instead, instead of you hold on to it, you're going to let it go, let it go, right? As a result, the blessing of the Lord that comes from that will make you rich in that transaction and the Lord will add no sorrow with it. Meaning, here's a, a, a fun example here. Let's say, I'll, I'll use, uh, who, who's with me right now? Comment, comment, comment. I think I saw, I'm gonna use Christopher. So Christopher, I see him and that was like the last chat. Let's say Christopher wins the lottery. We're gonna do two examples. Christopher wins the lottery and his, and we're gonna use the world's view definition of wealth and then we'll do the definition of the king and processing that. Okay, so Christopher wins the lottery in the world, 100 mil, more money than he's ever seen in his life, and he immediately feels fear, but instead of giving that fear and concern to the king, he's going to go on a major journey in the world and hire the smartest people on the planet, advisors of all walks of life, to advise him on how to best use this $100 million. Now, what just happened? Christopher just won $100 million in the world that he did not work for. He did not earn, he did not study, perform, or master the thing to get that 100 mil. But now that he knows the definition of the world, it's an abundance of valuable possessions or money. So he has money, so he's now wealthy. Christopher just instantly became wealthy. He just received the blessing, cool. Now, <clears throat> he's going to work extremely hard, earn, study, perform, master a thing, multiply, own, protect, and control by hiring the best people in the world to help him protect this money. Now, as a result of that, even when you hire the best of the best of the best of the best of the best in every industry, every marketplace, he will still have fear and worry because wealth comes with pain, worth, worry, fear, sorrow, and death. It comes with it. You can't get away from it. Someone's gonna die when he wins this $100 million. Someone's going to get hurt. Someone's gonna come to him in pain, in worry, in fear, and it's gonna put that fear and worry on him. He now has to fight, flight, or freeze, because that's how our brains work, okay? So, same scenario. Christopher wins the lottery and has this perspective of wealth and has this formula in place. And here's what he's gonna do. He immediately, fear and worry, all this stuff. He just won $100 million. He probably just had a heart attack. He's like, oh my God, I just want to win a hundred freaking million dollars. I've never seen that kind of money before in my life. I don't know what in the world I'm going to do with this hundred million dollars. Guess what? Since he knows his king in this example, Christopher knows his king and he goes back to how it works. Logically speaking here, he just says, okay, I just have to cast my fear and submit my fear and worry to the king. So he does that. He submits his fears and worries to the king. And then the king gets involved and advises Christopher on who to hire, who to call, where to show up, all the all the steps will be put in place for him because he just he just got involved. He involved the king in a worldly transaction. He submitted his fears and worry to the king. The king gets involved and now is inviting and advising Christopher. He's consulting with Christopher on how to use that $100 million. And Christopher will get the best of the best of the best of the best of the best in every industry according to how to multiply, how to be fruitful, how to multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion over that wealth that has been created. Which formula would you rather have? Let me know in the comments. Which formula would you rather have? The world's view, which is convoluted, constricted, conflicting, absolutely wrong or would you have it or would you rather have the king's view on what wealth is and how wealth is created and how you acquire the wealth and how you multiply the wealth and how you keep the wealth perpetuate the wealth and have dominion over the wealth